We are back! So is Brock Lesnar. We have all your UFC 226 fallout with Brendan Dorman. We will be talking Brock Lesnar. We're also talking to Bellator fighter Will Flurry and young Irish hot prospect Ian Gary. McDonald's a piece of shit! Miocic's a piece of shit! DC! I'm coming for you, motherfucker! Welcome along to Obviously Fight Talk episode 114. This is Nolo Keith back in studio and I'm joined by Robert Pallon. What's as up, always, I'd say, but not as always, because I've been away for six weeks. I'm as always. Six weeks? Almost seven weeks, nearly. Yeah, just go back and count the live chats. Yeah, so if you're looking, saying, Jesus, Rob's really got the old bedroom done up, it's not, we're back <laughs> <Yeah>. in the studio. <laughs> um, and I'm not his weird, deranged brother, just snooping yeah. in the room, but um, we're back, we're back in the studio, and yeah. we have got a show for you. <laughs> Um, so yeah, this show goes out on a Tuesday. If you if you're looking at it today, we record. This is a pre-record yeah. day before, so it goes out on a Tuesday. But Rob is also doing a live chat on a Wednesday. I'm only have to jump in on the odd Wednesday. I just can't give all me time. Yeah, but Rob can. He's a loser. Um, but that is available. Thanks, I, man. You, you tend to go to similar times. Bill yeah, Hart. I'm. Yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, around say eight o'clock, half eight. The World Cup is on. So it's over it, now in a, in a week. In, in a couple of weeks, yeah. yeah. So this week, I think there's a big match on. I think England play actually this, this Wednesday. Football's not coming home. It's on Wednesday, so um, I'll probably pu- try to push it yeah. to a little bit later. Maybe half eight ish. So half eight on Wednesday. Yeah. Join me. And then when you're miserable, when um, Croatia have knocked England out of the World Cup, miserable, you can come and um, listen to Rob's sound. Yeah. Voice. So if you're actually listening to this on audio. Go check us out on YouTube because yeah, that's where I do the live chat. But all this stuff will be available on audio. No, I don't know if I wrote it down, but we're also you featured did. on Podcast Republic. Mm. Go check them out on Android. Oh, what is Pod? It's what um, is it's an Android podcast? app that you can download for your Android phone. And yeah. listening to the sweet sounds of obviously Fight Talk and anybody else. And sure, go subscribe to us while you're here as well. Sure, may as well hit the sub button there. Yeah, if, if you listen to us, drag on. We won't drag on that much longer because. But also, give us a review. It's very important. Very important. And like this video Rob's and subscribe. Dragging, dragging Sorry. On. Continue. Dragging Lots on. of MMA talk to go down. So, um, Rob said it every week I was away and people kept asking, where's Noel? <laughs> no. I thought that was hilarious. Yeah, every yeah. week. You know, yeah. And Real obviously Noel. people were joining the live chat just yeah, after yeah. it opened. It should come up. Um, this will be lost on anyone who's under the age of 34 maybe. But Zig and Zag. Can you remember Zig and Zag? Yeah. When they were on the den. Yeah, they used to bring out terrible zig and zag for people. You could have said this would be lost on anybody who's outside of Ireland. Ireland. So Z- zig and zag was like a children's TV show. It went worldwide actually with Podge and Raj um, bedtime before they did. You're confusing people. No, so but much. zig and zag were these fluffy aliens. There was a TV show, but they brought out this video called "This Video Has Nothing to Do with Toast." Mm. So it was just it was like an hour long kids show, and just every five minutes it would come up and go. This is just a reminder that this video has absolutely nothing to do with toast. So the oh, longevity yeah. of this story was is that every two minutes it should have went, Noel is away on yeah. parent duties. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but let's move it on. So uh, run down this week, we'll be doing your quick fire news. We will be recapping UFC 226 and that incredible co-main event with Brendan Dorman. And the Brock Lesnar situation a little we bit. We will be speaking with an up-and-coming Irish fighter. Uh, we're going to tell you a little bit of his backstory, but we are joined by Ian Gary, and we're also joined by the raw bastard Will fucking Flurry, who fights this weekend on Bellator 203. But Rob, let's get it started with your quick fire news. Yeah. This is where we have two minutes on the clock. We read a storyline and we talk about it for two minutes just like this. Despite the rumours that Conor McGregor versus Khabib Nurmagomedov might be getting closer to reality, Dana White said after UFC 226 that the UFC are not talking business with Conor until his legal issue gets resolved. Quote, I know they're saying um, they're, they are in talks, but we're not talking about fight right now. Conor has to get through July. Whatever's going to happen to him in July, we'll figure that out. I don't know what's going to happen. Want me to talk? Um, yeah. I don't think the UFC can really come out and say, oh yeah, we're talking to Conor about a fight when he has a court appearance. And possible um, felony. and poss- Yeah, like nothing's going to happen no, to Conor. He's going to get slapped on the wrist. He's going to yeah. pay a decent, um, big fine. Probably say. do community service. Bit of community service, but I don't think much is going to happen. But they can't really come out and say, oh yeah, we're talking to Conor. Um, so if they're talking, who knows? I don't know. Um, there was a lot of rumours. There was rumor. a lot of rumours. There was, uh, like, uh, I think... 
at first there was a lot of talk of big breaking news on yeah. Sunday night. And you put early. something up, yeah. Yeah, and, and it turned out it was Brock Lesnar news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, look, I, I do think, like, as in, you, you'd almost can tell when Connor's coming around to um, fight time because a lot of his Instagram posts are, you know, obviously in the gym and stuff yeah. like that. Like, don't get me wrong, I don't think the man is ever out of the gym. But you can almost tell, looking at the the behaviour and patterns on his <clears throat> on his uh, social media, when Connor is in it. And it looks like he is. Khabib, of course, Ramadan is now over, so Khabib would be in camp. Yeah. It's the fight that I think is the big fight for the UFC. Yeah. But they obviously can't talk about it with the um, incident in New York that has to be. When is that in July? It's um, in July, isn't yeah. it? So it's, yeah, it'll be still in the next couple of weeks. Um, I'd imagine that we'll probably get some kind of announcement or at least um, Dana White dropping some kind of news late July, Look, early Look, there's August. no smoke without fire. Owen Roddy was talking about it. John Kavanaugh was talking about it. So there's no smoke. It's going to happen. It's like, going to happen. He's like, going to fight again. We're looking at Connor. Come December, we'll be out of the UFC cage two years. Yeah, I'll tell you what, though. So if Connor comes back and fights the end of the year or, say, early next year, and Brock Lesnar, as if you want to complain about Brock Lesnar fighting in the UFC, complain, it's fine. But if he does fight and Connor fights, it's going to be a big year for the UFC or a big end yeah. of the year slash start of next year. Plus, big talking point with eight seconds, seven seconds to go is Connor McGregor, as much as he's probably happy for Daniel Cormier, that's somebody taking his golden moment. Mm-hmm. What the fuck was that? Terrible bell. That's yeah, we what lost it. Is. it. Um, bell is gone. Oh God, I can't Jesus stop Christ, it. Stop it. Oh my oh God. Oh my God, the noise won't stop. Um, <laughs> Chuck Liddell versus Tito Ortiz has been reportedly made official under Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy promotion. The two men squared off at the UFC Hall of Fame over the weekend. Weird. Later footage <laughs> of Liddell hitting pads with Ray Sefo was uploaded to the interweb. Weird. And it does not look slick, smooth, fast or skillful. Is this one fight too many for the former UFC champion? Um, I was looking at it and I go, Jesus, Chuck looks in shape. And he does. Yeah. Um, the square off was like, Tito, yeah, don't train too hard. So, you know, you turn up. This fight isn't happening, is this it? This is coming from Tito. This is not happening. Just, man, this fight isn't happening. But, man, I shared the uh, Liddell footage hitting pads with Ray Seville and... Ugh. The silence is definitely. It was hard to watch. It's bad, isn't it? And as I said, there's either two reasons for this, right? That was put out. Chuck agreed to that getting put out. So is that a coy to make us go, yeah. holy shit, how bad does Chuck look? Like, he looks like... Or, it, yeah, or, it, or it, it, is that, you know, this is how bad... No, as in, is he playing the game as in, this is how bad I look? I know look, what you mean, yeah. As in, to love you think, oh I my think, God, this is terrible. Or yeah. is he thinking, man, I look fucking sharp. I hope it's the first one. I hope it's the first one. Can, if you were a commissioner, this is just a, a hypothetical situation, and you saw that footage, and you knew that Chuck Liddell was knocked out, probably, I don't know if his record in front of me, but he was knocked out quite a lot at the end of his career, yeah. and it's now many he years later. Realm, as he went to the shadow realm. Barry Keegan went to the shadow realm, and it's many years later now. Mm. Would you be happy to license Chuck Liddell to fight? Yeah, but you're talking about Las Vegas, probably. De La Hoya money. Oh, no, I'm talking about you personally. No, personally, no, no. And it's like, man, I got it. You know me. I get yeah, you love my stories. And you told me about that as yeah. well. You, you said it looks terrible and you're a big Chuck Liddell fan. Huge Chuck Liddell fan. But it just looks like, no, man. And I can appreciate Slow. what Chuck, Chuck is like. Look, if you like to watch the old footage of me, watch the old footage of me, but I'm fit and ready to fight. And you were sort of going, yeah, look, if he's that confident and he's fighting and he feels good, he said he feels like he's hitting hard he's uh, doing whatever and then that footage comes out you go nah Chuck come on mate yeah it's done <laughs> come on mate it's done it doesn't look good are you ready for the second of this lovely bell Fantastic. Jesus Christ we need to get the proper ring it bell back it is an excellent one uh, Bama has announced four shows um, in Dublin's three arena in 2019 the pr promotion returns in February May September and November along with their next date in December 2018 with the rumoured bout it is rumoured of Kiefer Crosby versus Terry Brazier headlining this is something Rob that somebody asked you on social media where they basically said with the UFC not coming to Ireland as much, do other shows need to step up? Bama, in fairness to them, have been visiting um, the Emerald Isle quite a bit. Um, KSW have dipped their toe. We've Brave, of course, was in uh, Belfast in June. Uh, Cage Warriors, of course, um, 
was that was last year, wasn't it? A three round, yeah, maybe two thousand and sixteen. So, yeah. yeah. Um but yeah, Bama, big announcement. Again, I wouldn't mind seeing Kiefer Crosby, Terry Brazier after Kiefer's last performance and Terry Brazier's last performance beating Reese McKee to become the champ champ for Bama. Uh, I think that is a good fight. Uh, yeah. Kiefer Crosby, huge following and uh, a lot of momentum behind Kiefer after his victories as well. But um, it is good to see Bama back here. Hopefully they just employ a um MC. Yeah. Buddy Johnson. Oh, me, Rob. I meant me. <laughs> Sorry. I meant me. Sorry, I thought you were talking about the MC. Um, they should call themselves Oyama. They Irish should. Association of yeah. Mixed Martial Arts. Yeah, they, really they seem do. to come here quite a bit. Um, I guess they're More shows, doing, I think, here than they had in the UK. I think so, yeah. Years. They're doing a lot of shows because they're pretty successful over here. A lot of people go... Yeah. Like, they're they're filling our biggest indoor... Well, not filling, but they're, they're you know, getting a decent amount of people in the door yeah, of our... they're getting about 5,000, between yeah, 5,000 and 7,000 people. Yeah, so they're five. about half of the arena which is yeah. pretty good yes it is good. Um, you know at, at 30, 30 to 50 quid a pop in general sorry um, yeah I like the fight uh, and it's Jude good to Samuel see Samuel gone it's as good matchmaker see. as well yeah, though, so yeah. interesting on that too. I think Matt Bourne I've heard could be wrong so yeah. apologies Bama and Matt if I am yeah. getting that wrong but, uh, yeah, it's cool that. to see. But yeah. I'd love to see the UFC come back. But just doesn't know what's going to happen. Uh, that was John Menton on uh, Twitter who asked uh, us severe and talking brawls. Um, I don't think there's a, I don't back. think there's any harm in the big shows coming um, to Ireland doing it. But you know, at the same time, I like seeing the a regional bit, shows. A bit of news as well. He tagged Alan Murphy of KSW in it, and uh, Alan said that KSW won't be back in Ireland this year, 2019, as a possibility, but nothing is certain. That bell. Yeah. Wonderful. Jesus Christ. Listen, don't talk ill of the bell. Yeah. Uh, Brian Ortega says that he stands by his decision not to fight a replacement at UFC 226, saying, quote, I'm a businessman, a company man, but I'm no yes man. Watching the fights last night, knowing I could have been performing for all of you, truly took a toll on me. I stand by my decision. Dana Weiss had said that Jeremy Stevens was in a short notice fill-in, or he was a short notice fill-in possibility, but Ortega turned it down. That's um, Dana White hanging Brian Ortega. I didn't like dry, that. Which is very peculiar. I don't like it. Brian Ortega has not had an easy path yeah. to the UFC goal. The only featherweight you could argue he hasn't really fought is Jose Aldo. Sure. Uh, you know, he's got a good way. And what happened with Max Holloway? Like, I think, you know, to compare to fight... Here's a weird one. Like, I think if he was fighting Cub Swanson in that fight, Jeremy Stevens might have been a short night was replacement. Similar style, you know, big bang. Like, I think Max Holloway is too different of a fighter to yeah. um, Jeremy Stevens to take on short notice. And I don't think it's because he feared Jeremy Stevens. I just think he was being intelligent. And being God forbid a fighter being intelligent. But I was I was disappointed in Dana White to hang him out to yeah. die. What was the first thing I said to you when... Uh, no, it was great to see you. I've missed yeah. you so bad. Apart from that, and apart from, oh no, the fire is over. Apart yeah. from all that shit. But when the news came out that Holloway was out, I said, I hope Ortega doesn't take a fight. There was yeah. no reason for it. Like, no. I just think it's silly if you're a contender and it's a couple of days out from a fight, why would you take another fight? I don't, I'm not, in, like, I've no interest in seeing a contender fight somebody, even if it's a great fight. Yeah. I just don't have any interest in that. They yeah. were going to go out and fight for a title. That's what I wanted they to see. They even tried that's to what, get Frankie Edgar for, short or, notice for an interim. Like, I didn't it need it. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. I, I completely agree or stand by Brian Ortega's decision. And I hate it the way Dana White comes out. And he does that quite a bit. If someone doesn't take a short notice fight, he comes out and says that, um, oh, this guy's not taking the fight. And that, especially to casual fans, yeah. that projects to them to say... Yeah. This guy is afraid, or this guy. That happened with Yara Rodriguez, or uh, yeah, Yara yeah, Rodriguez yeah, yeah. against the B. A little bit different, but it's similar. Where when so, when Dana says something, casual fans especially they latch on to that and they're like, "Oh, he's scared." It's, it's shit. He's your fighter. Promote him correctly. Bullshit. It's a great talent. Bullshit. Piece wow. of shit. I want to use this every week. Um, so following from that, as you're fully yeah. aware, the heart uh, the, and heartbroken, uh, Max Holloway had to be withdrawn from this title from his title defense against Brian Ortega. Holloway was visibly not himself throughout fight week and was withdrawn from the card later in the week. Uh, with no clear update on Holloway's health, we wish the uh, champ a healthy recovery first of all. But um, hugely concerning, Rob. Yeah, it's. That was obviously the first thing we thought was uh, hopefully Max Holloway is okay. Um, I googled it today just to see if there's any update on his health. There hasn't really been anything released. There was talk of him fighting soon, which is a bit weird because they were talking about concussion-like symptoms and all yeah. this kind of stuff. Dana did come out and said that 
Um, it was potentially something to do with his weight cut, but then his team came out and said that he didn't start his weight cut. Start, yeah. um, there was an article up. You, you I'll, could, I'm going to find it while yeah, you... Yeah, you could really see it thoughts. in... Um, the Bisbing interview, and you got to give it to Mike Bisbing. Fair play to Bisbing. Yeah, he called it out. Yeah. He said it. Um, like Holloway is always, he's, he's got that real uh, island sort of mentality. He's really, you man. You know, he's really laid back and yeah, chill. Yeah, but that and, was different. But yeah, he, he looked he, out of it. Yeah, he did look at it. He looked like someone jumped into his bedroom when he was fast asleep and stuck a microphone in front of him and he was real, oh, yeah, yeah. getting his, you know what I mean? He couldn't yeah. get his thoughts together. But, um, Firstly, like you have to look after fighter safety. I'm glad that his both his team and the UFC stepped in and wasn't allowed because Holloway again was pleading with his team like he did against Khabib where he wanted to fight. Your health is your wealth. Um and I hope to God, like it, it, a lot of talk was CTE was going yeah. batting around and hopefully it's not something like that. Go on, you found your article. Um, yeah, I found your it's a guy called his second name is Hamlin. Um and he done he had an interview with the Telegraph about it. And he said that it could be, uh, it could be that it's just a concussion that has been ignored, and that he has done uh, too much exercise. It could be dissection or dissection, mm. which is something that happens when the arteries in the neck get dissected and it uh, hinders bl- critical blood flow. Um, it could be so many things. It could even be uh, spontaneous n- neurology. Uh, it's easy for you to say neurological. Oh, it's a tough one. <laughs> yeah, it's a tough one. I'm not even going to pretend like, like epilepsy. Uh, yeah. So basically. He does know what it is because he hasn't looked at it, but he said that he's yeah. going to have to have MRIs and all that but kind of stuff. But he went in on the Monday and was cleared. Now go home, you're fine. And then the symptoms uh, came back yeah. again. Here's the bell, Rob. Get ready for the bell. Yeah. Hopefully he's okay. Um, yeah, like like I said, um, I hope Max Holloway is fine. And at the end of the day, you'd like to think that if it's not and they can't diagnose it, that they don't rush him in. Oh, definitely don't rush him Like if they sort of go... Like, if it started going, oh, we can't find out what's wrong with you. you sh- yeah, you must be all right. You can't, you can't go again. Yeah. He has to look after as well. Like, look at look at Stefan Struve that time. They knew it was hard. He came back. He was, remember that? And then remember backstage against it? Was it yeah, Alice Rowe? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, best of luck to Max Holloway in recovery. Yeah. Really mean that. Um, insane. Before we jump in and get Brendan Dorman on the phone, I've got to say, while I was away, everything went. Um, man as well Luke Thomas man on the MMA or yeah. I like it yeah I like it too it's well different. done Luke yeah well done Luke he, he was a, f- uh, a guest on the show before yeah well done so, um, um, and it's good to see that they're keeping the likes of MAB going and stuff like that as well yeah. of course, he's doing a good job yeah, he that's is. actually on probably right now yeah. as we're recording so yeah. we'll catch it and if any news comes from that mm. talk about it and then Ariel as well uh, done his first desk yeah. job as well the UFC doing yeah. it for ESPN as well yeah. so yeah it's, it's congrats uh, to all the world, Jesus, now goes off, has a baby, and everything changes in the world. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's let's talk UFC 226, that uh, co-main lot, event, man. I like, get cannot here. get into the, the technique in, in the co-main. Yeah. Um, but yeah, UFC 226 was an absolute beaut. I uh, couldn't think of two better people to break it down with than Robert Pallon and Brendan Dorman. I probably could, like the looks of Don Hardy, Brendan Schaub. Um, Probably them people. But um, Robin Black, of course. Um, Jack Slack. Uh, BJJ guy. Um, so we're like fifth and sixth. Uh, me brother talks good game as well. Me dad's getting sixth and seventh. Um, me ma had a good breakdown. Of <laughs> nah, let's let's get it on and let's get. We're not saying there's nobody. You're not saying he's the best. We're saying there's nobody better than. Let's him. get on. Brendan Dorman uh, back on OFT. He'll flex his muscles um, and he'll probably freeze the screen. In his stupid face like he does. The beautiful Brendan Dorman. So welcome back to, obviously, Fight Talk. UFC 226 went down this weekend. It would be good if me and Rob just broke it down. But let's make things a little better. Let's get on the man. We're not saying he's the best. We're just saying there's nobody better. Brendan Dorman, I've missed you. Oh, I missed your face, sweetheart. (laughs) Hello, everyone. Um... I listened to you, the, your, you guys. i got to say before we dive into it, because this is the first time Brendan's on it. Gentlemen, stellar work while I was away. Brendan, don't say the C word. Um, <laughs> s- stellar work while I was away by both of you with the live Thank stream. You. Excellent show. Uh, obviously, it's going to keep coming every week. I thoroughly enjoyed watching it. Just not as good as when I'm on. Um, <laughs> oh, backhanded <laughs> compliment. Yes. Love but, it. Um, yeah, UFC 226 went down this weekend. And, gentlemen, mm. we've seen... History. Yes. Daniel Cormier gets a first round TKO over Stipe Miocic. 
you talked about it and a lot of people just thought Stipe was going to turn up here and get the win. The bigger guy, a lot of people thought he was going to be the faster guy, carry more power in his shots and basically just pick Daniel Cormier apart. You gentlemen didn't think that, but Brendan, to you, because I know Rob said he had a take on it and you said on Twitter I had a mm. little bit of a different take. Um, so what was your take of the main event at UFC 226? I, this seems to be thematic at this point, but talking points are like the bane of my existence, mm. right? If they become this, I don't know. It, it's, it's, it's the way that they're selected somehow. I don't know how it happens, how things become, I guess, viral for lack of a better term. But in certain fights, things happen that change the direction of a fight very dramatically. Mm. And oftentimes, depending on who wins and who loses... We focus on them or we don't. Like it's uh, mm. okay. So sure. with that as a preface, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that as a preface to my point. If you take someone like Tony Ferguson, who I'm a fan of, this isn't anti anyone. None of what I'm gonna say is anti a fighter, mm -hmm. but sure. it's it, it's just factual. When he beat Edson Barboza, what was the changing moment in that fight? I love when he puts us on the spots like this. It's okay if you can just, if you just go. I, I don't know. No, you're, you're, I think I think it was. I pokes. Uh, I'll get there, but no, no. Okay, okay I, can't, we I can't remember. We don't know. Pass. Okay, they, when they were when they were on the ground, like because Edson was starting out the gate that that fight, mm. kind of on on the winning side. Not drastically, he didn't hurt him really, but he was he was scoring more. Let's mm. say, grounded. Tony kicked him so hard in the head with an oh, illegal shit, strike yeah. oh, that shit, Edson yeah, was yeah, 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 wobbly. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right wobbly here like he was hurt yeah we let it that was so it just like, like an oops let's time out everyone reset mm. it was he's fucked up yeah and the fighter in him wants to fight mm -hmm. obviously right so whether or not he got back too fast we don't know we weren't we don't know what was going on in his head his equilibrium etc right mm -hmm. never discussed you guys remember now but you didn't remember before yeah, yeah. which is fine it's not that you guys are wrong or right. It's just that it's obviously not a talking point. You could name a hundred John Jones examples of eye pokes. Yeah. RDA. Yeah. Tony Ferguson. Anyone? What's, sorry, what's the, the I guess the, the, turning point, the turning point in RDA versus Tony Ferguson. Mm hmm. Was that eye pokes? I can't remember. Yeah. Yes, it was. Yeah. It, there was it, definitely it was pokes. dramatic. Yeah. Okay. Almost gouging. Two, Two of his biggest wins, if not his two biggest wins, right? Sure. Kevin oh, Lee, yeah. right? But, yeah, yeah. You know, minus that and that, Stuff. you know, again, the um, the luck dragon was blowing smoke on him because Kevin Lee ended up with staph infection, but I, I digress. So with this fight, I feel like Stipe was winning the stand-up exchanges, although DC has a match the video game attack to striking at times. It's a little hard to prep for where he... Frames out yeah, all square yeah, yeah. hipped and throws that really fast little mini jab. Yeah. Kind of like what I was saying Holloway does, but way hey, less cute. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so Stipe was kind of tuning him up. His striking looked really good, and his grappling looked good. And I, I th thought the X factor may be that. It was kind of playing out like I figured it would. Didn't know who was going to win or anything, but just it looked like I thought it would kind of look. Now, the whole thing that Dominic made a big thing about, and Dominic's very smart although I think he overplayed it a tad, was, was the overhook underhook game that Cormier was playing to lay a trap. And, mm. and Cormier spoke to it after the fight, and I got, I'm sure we'll get there. And he said that Stipe tends to leave clinches with his hand dropped. Mm. But if you watch, let's say a minute on the clock time, that same exact sequence happened the way DC caught Stipe mm -hmm. with that right hand hook off the clinch break, right? And Stipe slipped it. Mm. So it, it might have grazed, like, I don't think it even hit him, but he slipped it pretty pretty easily. Then he got poked in the eye. Mm. Bad. And he did not see the next one, and he went to bed. Because mm. he got hit so flush, it was almost weird, right? And then DC's follow-up punches were less than cute, again, I'll say. Um, looked a little weird, but um, there's an eye poke. No one's fucking talking about it. He slipped the exact sequence. I mean, we're talking like from the hook to the punch to the hips to the it's 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 a mirror of something that happened 
40 seconds prior. Yeah. So someone as, as good as Stipe, who we just days ago were agreeing is the greatest heavyweight in UFC, if not MMA history, is not going to make reads. He's not going to improvise. He, he didn't see it the first time. Mm. Oh, I saw it the first time and the second time. I, I didn't fucking see it. No, you got, you got poked in the eye. He literally didn't see it. Why is that not being spoken of? There are a lot of problems right now in the UFC, if you haven't noticed, right? Um, Nagano's good or, a piece of shit. Nagano's a piece of shit. That's what's the problem. Who? Nagano's a piece of shit. That's the problem. I'm not going to call that guy who could break me in half a piece of shit. <laughs> just, just I'll a, get to him. I'm just, just, a, I'm just, just a Lesnar yeah, impression. Brock Lesnar. No, no, no. That, oh, okay, I got you. God, he's he's a be, piece of boy, shit. has to come up like three actors. <laughs> yeah, and, and yeah. I probably definitely shouldn't talk shit about him because I've met him. Yeah, and he's pretty intimidating. Yeah, he's freaking uh, he's a piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> he's, uh, yeah, that was, uh, we'll get, I guess we'll get there. Yeah, so yeah. My, my point is, amazing win for DC. I'm not yeah. taking a, a thing away from the guy. Sounds he's a. Good. He's such a he's such a great story. Yeah. I wish someone had wardrobe control over him, so he didn't look like a seventy year old guy on his way to a fishing trip with his grandson every time he came out to the ring. His fucking sweatpants and his belly button and shit. That is I, weird. I, I could avoid that, right? But I admire the shit out of that guy's moxie. He's a wonderful fighter who's probably been clean at least in his MMA career. Because I was watching some of his old wrestling footage, and he was a little, uh, a little jacked up, a little jacked <laughs> up back in the day. So I can um, attest to not being as jacked fight. up the quick, longer the years go. Mm. Sorry, what's that, bud? I can attest to not being as jacked as the years trickled past you. So, oh well, same. You know, I'm. <laughs> I'm 40s looking like close now, so <laughs> I get it. You don't your, your body doesn't look the same anymore. I, I, I understand, but I'm I'm being sure kind of silly with that. Sure. My point is, is DC is amazing. It was an amazing win. Mm. Uh, whatever your take is on the aftermath, like you know, I don't know how how deep you want to go in that rabbit hole. I just don't like terrible the dismissal of Stipe's existence almost. It's like mm. now it's DC's time and John Jones would have this and now Lesnar came in and now you saw the fighters' reaction to the Lesnar thing and there's a reason. They it's they fucked it up. Mm. You could have done that and it could have worked. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It was just so poorly executed because they're not in the business of fake shit. You know? It was so clearly fake shit. It was just fake shit. Like... Anyone who was watching that going like, oh, my God, it's crazy. <laughs> like, you, really? Bruce Buffer yeah, was with his camera phone. That's cried to Terry Funk about it's still real. Yeah. You know, the dead, like, I found the dead giveaway was Bruce Buffer, who had just announced the winner, already had his phone out <laughs> yeah. filming it. Did he? Yeah. I didn't even notice that. He's standing there in his beautiful myriad. Beautiful ivory <laughs> jacket. It was... It was stunning. Uh, but he had the phone out filming it. Yeah, but talking about the fight, right, I get what you're saying. And I actually, yeah. I messaged Rob this morning and go, I can't find the link for the fight. And he's like, why did you forget? And I'm like, no, I didn't. I said, I wanted to see how long was in the distance with the eye poke and the finish. So I was looking at that. And None. It's, like it's 40 seconds. It's, it's something yeah. that I say, I say quite regularly when I'm commentating on fights. When a fighter gets hit with a grind strike or an illegal strike, they have five minutes to, to recover and stuff like that. And you don't see a lot of fighters taking their time. Um, and then when Stipe got caught, I said it to Rob walking in today as well. Just as Stipe was coming in, DC catches him with a nice, cute one-two. But just as they start to get into that grapple uh, distance and the clinch distance, I thought he caught him with a jab. Rob has said it's more of an eye poke. Right as they're coming into the clinch, and that's when DC lands the right hand then and, and drops um, Stipe. But like for me, I thought, yes, I agree with everything you were yeah. saying, by the way, Brent. I thought Stipe was walking was down fire. Cormier. He was... Winning the exchanges, but I thought he was also getting tuned up in encounters. Like he, his face was badly um, beaten up under the eyes. He had little little cuts. He was getting hit more than you'd like to see a heavyweight get hit. Um, but I think a lot of credit has to go to Cormier. But I do think you're right because I don't know. For the first time, you could really hear Mark Goddard like crystal clear throughout yeah. the whole fight, mm-hmm. and he kept I warning Cormier. Yeah, yeah, kept warning Cormier. Get your fingers in, Daniel. Get your fingers in. Because um, the first, the, sorry to cut you off real, yeah. real quick. The first warning he said, um, "Watch the fingers," but he didn't. You didn't really know who or why. Yeah, cause yeah, yeah. Maybe the camera angle. I, I didn't know at the time. Yeah. Rewatching it, you can tell who we met and why. And then 
after the second one, he's like, I warned you. Mm-hmm. I warned you, in other words, yeah. not not Stipe. And there's three moments in the fight that look like eye pokes to me or close to. One's a, a very obvious one. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't know anyone that's ever learned to throw a jab like yeah. this. That's that, how he threw his jab. Would well, he that, just fucking make a mistake? Well, that's what somebody you know, like said. John and... Jones has like made jokes about that with Travis Brown in the past. Yeah. Like, oh, he's using my technique. Yeah. It's like, I don't know if you're kidding. I, I don't know. That's, so. that's, that's the point that somebody said on Twitter as well. It's good to see that Daniel has, has taken masters, his losses yeah. and, and mastered the techniques of, of, his, his, of his foes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, hmm. But yeah, but Rob, what did you? What was your thoughts on it? Because I know you, you guys done an exceptional break. Yeah. In the fight, so. No, no, I, I, just, I thought it was very impressive. Like I, I completely get uh, what you're saying, Brendan. Like completely, and I, I even said it on the tweets that there was definitely an eye poke there, and Stipe was 100 percent a different fighter after those eye pokes. And I don't know why people don't talk about it. Why was it rushed back so quick after the poke? Why was he not given much more time than he actually was? Is that Stipe was saying he, I'm ready to possibly, go? Possibly. I don't know. I didn't really I take. Yeah, I didn't take notice of that really because um, he it turned around very quick and. Because, like you said, Brandon, he literally, it wasn't like, you know, he was reaching out with his hand. He literally went, yeah. And you probably can't see that, Brandon, but my hand no, was I can see it perfect, yeah. Yeah, and he literally went like that with the shot. Like, it wasn't like it was a closed fist. His hand was open from the moment the left. Yeah. Um, so, it, and he, he, like, he dragged a couple of fingers in the eye as well. It wasn't just one finger. It was like he, he, he went was, with them, like, through the eye. Yeah, like, because the nature of, it was a right hand, right? Yeah. So the na- the nature of the way he threw it, yeah. his fingers, here's the camera, like, go, brr, yeah. the thumb. Yeah. Right? But you, you do relax your hands when you throw a punch, mm, right? And then yeah. you squeeze at the last second. But he, that's where he was extending. Mm. Like, he wasn't off target. Yeah. You, you see what I'm saying? It wasn't, I don't know, man. It's really hard to say. And I don't, I'm not psychic, and I'm not in anyone's heads or whatever and, and DC's not a dirty guy from what oh, yeah. I, I know anyway you know it's it's tough but it's, I, tough. it's, it's more the the perception of the of the fight that drives me crazy yeah. than the result I, I said I said on our last show I, I don't give a fuck about the result yeah yeah I really don't that wasn't I just want some some level of sanity in this crazy game we're in you know yeah. Like, I just want people to talk about, just be objective. When I say be objective, I'm not saying I'm objective because I'm not in a position where I have to be. I can talk shit about whatever, mm. right? Who fucking cares? When I'm in a position where I have to be objective, though, but your ass I'm going to be. Mm. And that's why, like, commentary and things like that, I think, need to be. You can get as excited as you want. That doesn't bother me. But uh, objectivity is super important. And I, I don't know how these things get overlooked. Ferguson's example, those are two very important fights yeah. in his career man yeah you know and this is obviously dc's i mean you know this is his rock three this is the apex of his career i think yeah, yeah look so, i, I want to rewatch it because you pointed out that there was uh, the same punch uh, just a little bit earlier i didn't see that or i, I obviously i didn't mm-hmm. don't remember it live but what i do remember was i'm pretty sure dc wasn't really looking for underhooks throughout the fight mm. at least not a lot he probably done it once or twice a lot of the time he had an overhook up against the cage that's when Stipe took him down yeah. and what the what I got from I thought that Stipe probably was looking at a takedown he's probably looking for a wrist or something he's probably looking for uh, Cormier to look for a leg and it was like wrist control or he was looking to to sprawl against or something against the fence he was but yeah, no was. this was open field yeah but that's so, I, I thought that Cor- Stipe thought when Cormier got that underhook I thought he thought that a takedown was coming, not a punch. Mm. But it no. it could have been it could have been the eye poke. I noticed that one of the, the opening exchanges, I think it was on Steep A was putting Cormier up against the cage. Very similar to their fight finish sequence. He it was more of an uppercut he threw. And yeah. Cormier had spoke about it going, look, everybody knows I like the dirty box and yeah. uppercut on the on the inside. And he's like, But this yeah. this is the shot we've seen. And he threw a very similar and it did land. It was more of an uppercut than a right hook and it did land on, on uh on That's, That's the not thing. what I'm talking about at all. That's the thing though. Yeah, I know you're talking just before. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing with Steve no, though. Not, he does yeah, get hit. Before, it's not that. Because Steve, this is I know we're it was mid, it was what forty seconds left on the clock when it was over, right? Yeah, no, twenty seven so seconds. Like yeah, minute, it was, it was you know what? I don't know exactly because I, I watched it once more. Yeah, yeah. But in that once more is what I noticed. I noticed the uppercut, separate sequence. Yeah, because Stipe had time to then after that the next time because Cormier ducks his head a little bit to obviously to Bob first before he th- you know it's Tyson one hundred and one before you throw an uppercut you kind of bob your head. Stipe countered that with a knee. 
right? So he uh, he was making reads on the fly. These, there's a lot that was going on in the proverbial chess match, right? Mm. Including him slipping that in the open field, the same exact punch in the same exact spot in the ring. Like from the same sequence, man, it's not mm. against the fence. It wasn't an uppercut. It couldn't be. It was a wild right. And Stipe slipped it. He saw it. He, he, he's a he's a boxer by trade. He slips. Like you know, it's not da Daniel leaning. It's slipping. Mm. It's it's way different to slip. So if you slip it once, the same sequence was it somehow magically different the second? No, couldn't fucking see it. No one's said that in the media. I, I'm the first person to say this. Um. Why? Yeah, it's, it's agendas come with things, don't they? When people say, I don't, I don't think it's an agenda, it's, I though. Agenda, I think, I think it's, it's, no, it's a weird, it's a weird it's perception. Even. Yeah, no, it's I think it's a perception weird. thing. Yeah. yeah, it's, it's more. I think it's more so that if it's, the commentary, guy as well, no, though. as well, yeah, if the commentary picks, picks it up, up it, yeah. then everybody would pick yeah. it up. If the commentary doesn't mm -hmm. pick it up, very Reddit little people picked it would up, pick though. it up. It was all over Reddit, yeah, Twitter. There was as well. I will say. Yeah, mm. I will say there was one Stipe Miocic uh, eye poke as well, yeah. and it was a pretty bad one as well. It just obviously didn't affect Cormier. So, it, like, I don't think either guy what's, was necessarily right, we, we, we know trying what's, to poke We know what's next, and I asked Rob just before we came on, and Rob went, I don't know. I'm like, yeah. well, this is going to be a really boring show, then, Rob. I'll think about it. Because I, I, the question I posed, we know what the timeline and what's happening with DC is. He, he's done a march by all accounts, so mm. he wants to defend the low heavyweight, and he wants to fight Brock, right? That's what it looks like is happening. But what's next for Stipe Miocic? He's cleared out the division. So what does Stipe got to do? He's got is it Curtis Blades? Is that the next fight? Because yeah. Curtis Blades was top of the queue. Yeah. And then Brock Lesnar. Curtis Blades must have been sitting there going, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. What the fuck is Brock Lesnar doing here? You know. So. Yeah. 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 yeah Blades probably. I don't know how he matches up with DC. He's definitely taller. Did you notice Stipe's height and leverage? He was using wrist control mm. on DC the same way that like Jones was. Mm. He was using his height to. Yeah like way down on his wrists against the fence so a taller guy the reason i'm saying that is someone like curtis blaze or brock for that matter who everyone's talking about brock is if he's skillless yeah which is fucking ridiculous uh, i'm not saying that he's a finesse striker but to, to call him unta like untalented or whatever is just so absurd i mean it's a former champion talking to william what today fights. I was talking to a guy briefly and worked today and he was like, oh, this Lesnar stuff is ridiculous, isn't it? Lesnar fighting for the title. And I said, yeah, but funny, I'd pick him to win the fight. Would you? Yeah, just his sheer size. Mm. He's fucking... He a could win. He's a steamroller. He could, yeah, he could, I don't think it's a, it's necessary. He can win. Yeah, he can yeah, definitely, he he definitely win. Otherwise, he can, yeah, he can definitely win. Understand. I wouldn't pick they him. just no. don't understand. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I wouldn't not pick saying him. he should be the favorite and I'm not saying he will win. Yeah, yeah. But I saw a lot of people going, well, that fight's a fucking joke. Yeah. Really? Mm -mm. Well... I, I, I Cormier hits like like uh, Shane Carwin because guess what that wasn't yeah. enough. But that's yeah. what but that's what I mean. I don't like I don't I no. don't think the fight is a joke. I think the setup for it and how it's yeah, yeah. happened it doesn't is make a any joke. sense. Right. Yeah, that I agree with. Yeah, 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 yeah. But when and the fight happens, what I mean, though. fuck man, yeah. best of luck. That's the thing Brock, as well. It? I come into work as well, and a similar situation. Somebody said bullshit, no, no interest or or whatever it was, and I said, "Will you watch it?" Yeah, yeah. There you go. So I did not. And just as an addendum to what Rob just said. If you look at the view counts on oh. anything Brock Lesnar yeah. DC right now, yeah. a million, yeah. three million. I mean, people are talking. So yeah. as much as we can fucking talk shit, we're 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 broke doing it. Yeah. yeah. So I, Brent, who, who's laughing? On the way know? to work as well, I also said to Noel, I was like, "What happened in the octagon uh, on Saturday night? Not the fight. The afterwards. That wasn't for yeah. us." No, that, that was not for us. No. That was for the guy who doesn't watch UFC very much, doesn't watch MMA very much, and the Which guy who was like eighty percent of the fan base. At exactly, least. exactly. That's who that was for. That the was the guy sitting at like, home oh my with God. a Suplex City T-shirt. Exactly, on. exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, exactly that's who that was, was. for. Yeah. And you know, handsome as the day is long with his yeah. Cheeto fingers glowing. <laughs> <laughs> with the voice of these. <laughs> That's a, ter a terrible stereotype. Uh, moving on from one heavyweight classic to another. Oh, Jesus. Derek Lewis gets the big uh, win uh, over Andrew. Francis Nuganu. Can I do something? This was a testament to Adam. You see, Brendan, you have it easy in the States. You're watching it at human hours. Yeah. We are sitting up. I think this fight started at 4 a.m. Irish time. If, uh, if you know, sat feel, through this okay. and you stayed awake, congratulations. Congratulations. This was what, like, 
I think there's an excuse for Derek Lewis. It sounds poor saying this. Derek Lewis clearly had a back injury throughout the fight. He complained mm-hmm. about it. He'd done all that. He was still throwing fucking switch kicks. He's 264 pounds. He was Leaping throwing... Leaping switch kicks. Yes. He was trying to engage. I, what was quite weird was, I think, first round he was trying to engage. He wanted Nagano to come at him at the counter. Francis Nagano never got going. Was this a mental block and not a skill block? Because that's what it seemed to be. This seemed to be he was terrified to pull the trigger due to a takedown or counters. This did not look like the same man we've seen fight previously. Um, he needs, I think Rogan said this, and I agree 100%. He needs a sports psychologist Yeah. more than anything right now. I think so. That is a broken man. Yeah. He's bro- he's broken. Sure. He looked shot. Physically, I bet you he's got every bit of skill he did before, and maybe some more. Yeah, of course. ten pounds. Part. He looked. Look he looked like a streamlined good. version of Francis Ngannou. Who looked like he was. He going- was so in shape. Yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, this fight is gonna be fun. Yeah. Mm. It was mm. the fucking, the opposite. It was the, the worst. Shit. Worst heavyweight worst. fight of all time. Potentially. The worst or- fight, considering the stage. Yeah. Comina Ben on that card. That might be the worst fight ever. Yeah. The one that springs to mind is because I was Googling this and remembering them was Tim Sylvia, Andre Olovsky 3. That was an awful fight. I can't even remember. Yeah, was, yeah. One, I don't think it was heavyweight. I think some, it fell under 205. Like, it was some, Dada 5,000 or 3,000 or 6,000. That yeah, was god awful. Yeah. Kimbo Slice. Yeah, it was god awful. Yeah, but, uh, did anyone expect that to exactly, be wonderful? Yeah, this, look, I bought the pay per view, Brandon. I was yeah. all keyed up. Dada 5,000, Kimbo Slice. Guy, the but, five fan. You know, he's a circus show. Yeah, yeah. Um, this was not weak. It's the expectations versus what happened. Yeah. It's, I, it's fell, I fell asleep uh, really early. I didn't actually watch this event live. So I decided Lucky, man. I decided to try tweet um, after the fact the next day. And I just thought it was hilarious because my first tweet uh, about this fight was, here we go with Lewis Ngannou. I'm interested to see if Lewis can do anything to test the deficiencies Ngannou clearly had. I'm not so sure. He can hurt Ngannou, sure. But uh, will we learn a lot? Let's see. Um, and then somebody goes, you have my sympathy in advance. And that was just as the fight was about to start. And I was like, oh, oh shit, what happens? Shit, what Spoiler. happens? Yeah. And then the next tweet was, it's not too late, bro. Fast forward. <laughs> it's oh, like, oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah. Did you, did you watch it I anyway? watched it. Like, I watched it. Yeah. Awful. Awful. Okay, so I said, I don't know who read it, but I sent it to the... You know the page both you have access to not anyone's private i i, I won't say who but it's pretty easy to narrow down if people are smart because i tweeted it out but i tweeted two people that are uh, that are fellow african natives right oh, yeah. and you gotta understand where these people come from whether it's nigeria or wherever it's so much worse than anything we could ever imagine ever so someone like Stylebender, uh usman um Nganu, they come from from places that the poverty level is is way beyond the pale of anything we've ever seen, ever, in per, probably in person in our lives. Um, with that usually comes this incredible character or whatever you want to call it, fortitude or you know what a, a touch word of brave, bravery I guess right. So I had I had I had tagged a few of them in that and I'm like that's a broken dude for this reason. These people, and I named those two and him, these these people are unflappable. And there's a I, I know Kamaru and I know Stylebender through the internet, but I don't I never met him. But I know I know Kamaru and that dude is un, he's unshakable. Mm. It's the same with like someone said something about Khabib being scared somewhere. I, one of the funniest things I've ever read in my life. And Usman and Khabib tend to get along well. I think there's a common denominator there, right? When you've seen friends die of less than savory things your whole life, I mean, that's that's this weird strength from a horrific situation. Mm. In Ganu, you would you would think would be kind of impervious to that, but now that I'm hearing all this stuff, Dewey Cooper either walked away or something happened there. Mm. I don't know. Those coaches, the way they were talking to him in between rounds, there was no urgency, zero. Oh. It's almost like they were yes men. I yeah, it, it came at the. They, it came, they didn't say get fucking aggressive, dude. What yeah, are you doing? It, it like, came at the end of the second round where he, he quite calmly said, "You potentially are two rounds down here. You're <laughs> gonna have to let your hands go." Like, like that. He sounded yeah, just yeah. like that. Yeah. In a yeah. room, in a arena. Yeah. Yeah. Where the guy had thrown three punches yeah. up until that point. Man. What the fuck, man? Mm. 
I've never seen a guy fall from grace like that ever. So quick. I've never seen someone that gun shy. I mean, he was so gun shy. It's like, did he have one counter in mind? Because yeah. he, he came out southpaw and then just stood there. And he looked agile and his footwork looked balanced, you know, kind of like all the hallmarks of what made him good or get to the dance. And then you just went like, would you fucking do something, anything? Yeah. Like, I don't care what, go for a takedown and miss it. I don't care if you fall and break your toe. I need to see something. This is awful. It was like unwatchable. It yeah. was just like, I, is this real? I had built this up. Um, we were watching it late, obviously, over here. And my wife was beside me and Derek Lewis was coming out and was like, this this is a great fight. Like, this is, like these two, like Derek Lewis, he's not this amazing technical guy, but he just has knockout power. And this Francis Nugano who's a freak. He has absolute hand grenades and bow hands. And I'm selling this, mm -hmm. selling this, selling this. After the first round, my missus looked at me and went, I'm going to bed now, this is shy. <laughs> What do you say? Yeah. Well, what's left to say? Yeah. He's broken. Yeah. Look, I hope he turns around and he gets it. But I like, hope so. Very interesting sure. with Dana it's White. It's not unfixable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Broken. Yeah. yeah. Different. It was interesting Dana White, as Dana White does, you know, t talking about his ego and, you know, this has happened. I don't but, like that. But, yeah, Dana White is after you Alistair over him. Oh, this guy is the next good bit. Like, they built him as a yeah. god. I don't know. Going I, in against some, Steve Sometimes so, I have, I have an issue ego. with with the way he promotes sometimes uh, even with sometimes Bri with a lot of time uh, with Brian Ortega he, he basically came out and he said to the fans yeah. Brian Ortega's not taking this fight this guy is going to be a, a fucking star for you what are you doing yeah. why are you telling people to hate yeah. Brian Ortega because he's not taking fights can't, what are you doing that for can't hate Brian Ortega that's insane Awful. that is insane Awful. That's such a terrible, oh. terrible idea. Yeah. See, yeah. he does some things promotionally oh. in retrospect that were really, really smart, yeah. right? Yeah. A couple, a couple. He's had some errors. We all do this in life. Mm. I have some breakdowns. I still have. I want to just delete them. They suck. Yeah. I fucked up. I didn't do the best. Yeah. my best work. We're not perfect people. Mm. But Dana's, it, these are calculated decisions he's making. It's a little different than not having your best day, let's say. Why would you undersell Ortega and or not understand what's going on? He worked his ass off to get where he is. He already did this with Frankie. Like, he already went through this. Yeah. No more. No more. Yeah. Let him fight for the belt. Yeah. Shut the fuck up with it. Yeah. It's. If I could tell you, I'll tell you guys another time or some other time. I don't know, whatever. In my, in my memoirs, <laughs> some of the shit that goes on backstage, you'd be fucking amazed. And it's very similar to this Ortega thing. Very similar. Uh, let's run through some of the That he arms. doesn't talk about, you know what I mean? If yeah, it's like yeah. one of his favorites. Let's run through some of the, of the other fights on the card. An absolute barn burner we got on a short notice as well was Mike Perry taking on Paul Felder. Yeah, Ooh, that fight. was a fun fucking fight. Really good Paul fight. Felder was literally thrown broken limbs at Mike yeah, Perry. Yeah, literally, yeah. Yeah. Um, that was an awesome fight I have to say I don't mind uh, Mike Perry at welterweight I don't think he's that small and if, if the cut's better for him I think that I think you said it as well if he didn't have a broken arm wait Paul you Felder, mean Felder? Felder Paul Felder yeah mm. I think if, if he didn't have a broken arm I think it would have been even closer than it was and it was pretty close I, it wasn't I said runaway. coming to work today as me and Rob walk up to work together I said I was half expecting to hear your winner Paul Felder I think damaged blood and that, that left shovel hook that cut the eye of Felder, I think that scored really big on the judges' scorecards. Yeah. But I, I sure thought I thought Felder actually, um, I know I don't pay much attention to the significant strikes because yeah. it's just some guy backstage pressing a button. But um, I thought Felder landed the, the better shots in the, uh, the 15 minutes. I'm not angry mm. at the decision because I thought Mike Perry looked I good too. I thought Perry won, but um, I, get, I get it. Great fight, and like it, it, it is quite weird that they were. And this is in a way, Brendan, like with the eye pokes that you were talking about. Mm. Commentary really honed in on Felder trying to spin in uh, back fist where he catch him. Oh with my the god, forearm. the forty-eight yeah. mentions. I know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I, I think both fighters, Perry, look excellent. First fight out of uh, Wink Jack. Uh, Wink Jack. And, and great stuff. <laughs> um, but Felder, man, at 170, looked phenomenal as well. Um, hopefully, he's not too injured, as in maybe it's not a broken I don't know if they've confirmed it's a broken arm. But uh, hopefully not. But yeah, I thought that was an absolute classic. It was a great fight. Yeah, good fight. Yeah. Perry looked fast. Yeah. Looked better. Didn't he? His he elbows better. off the clinch as well. Yeah. His right hand, he's got a fucking grenade. Yeah. He's there were a few that missed that. I think the whole crowd went yeah. like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> it was like it was just the, the speed. He's the, very uh, durable oh. as well, Mike Perry. Like yeah. he can take a shot to land a shot. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, he's he's very um like watching my my main man Rob uh, font fight. 
It was like watching that fight again. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was like one guy's very patient, 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 and then like everything in it. Yeah. It's just he waits and waits and waits, and then he goes ballistic and then waits. Like it's his pace. His pacing's interesting, mm. but I, it's probably smart for his chin, his power, his cardio, maybe. You know? Yeah. Uh, I Jackson Wink in that short period of time did some pretty. Pretty impressive things. That Pretty slam awesome. was crazy. Yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ. It was a fucking grenade. Holy shit. I liked this. Didn't his... land flush, really, but man. Yeah. I liked his post-fight uh, interview. He seemed really humble, but I also liked the way he was saying, I'm just getting started here. I'm just, like, it's almost like he's learning on the job. Which it is, is probably not, it's, it. yeah. It's it's it was pretty good. He was basically saying I was doing a lot of things wrong. I'm finally at a camp where I feel like things are going correctly, and I'm only learning. This is I'm, I'm only starting. So I thought it was good. It was like it was it was mature. It was one of the more mature ones that he said. It wasn't the uh, don't get a face tattoo. And that was a good one as well. It was good, but you know, different. It's different. Um, yeah, he 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 picks his spots to be very likable. Yeah, he can be. He can you be. Know? Yeah. But it's something though, Brendan, that you are quite critical, and I I believe rightly so in his previous fights, where you're saying he's got absolutely no technique, um, and he, he's lacking technique. But you can see he's got the power to be honed and to be trained. So yeah. is that something that you've seen in the interim between his previous fights and now? Hmm. Yeah. But like the straightness. That right, yeah. Like there was, he was winging it a little bit. If you notice when he the left hook that dropped uh, that dropped Paul, that was from a distance. He, sh- I mean, if it was technically perfect, his right hand would have covered this side of his face when he threw it. Sure. But it, it doesn't matter. It was still a nice crisp, um, you know, lunging. They would call it left hook. But it was the way that he threw it, and from the angle that he did, where he faded at that forty-five to be out of danger. You know, um, yeah, yeah, is is. His striking technique looked crisper, but it, it, it's like doing this, you know, as far as like what's technically, you know, sound. Sure. Although we saw a lot of non-technically sound striking when fights, so. It's very true. You know. Um, your boy, um, in some ways, probably can't that. Your boy, Anthony Pettis, was back. Uh, Mike Chiesa gets the win against Mike Chiesa by uh, triangle slash armbar. I don't know, it's did they call it? They tried, did they, was it an armbar? I think triangle? they said, Bruce boat. Buffer said boat. So I don't know. He was going out. I, yeah. If you look at it, the the uh, arm wasn't extended. Really. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what I, I think. He, I think he tapped the yeah. inevitability of things. Is Showtime back? <sighs> if if Duke knows Anthony as well as it appears he does, <laughs> and what we kind of alluded to, then yes, let's hope so. Yeah. I love that. I love the mentality of you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna be me yeah. and rely on I my like jujitsu like and just abandon wrestling. Yeah, because he, yeah. he hasn't done it long enough. Like even me and I've I've never clearly been at that level of fighting, but like I didn't wrestle young enough that I ever thought myself. I never fancied myself a wrestler. Mm. I understand it very well, but I'm not awesome at it because I don't have a life of of yeah. muscle memory yeah, of wrestling. Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So with him. Part of the, the the beauty and one of my better breakdowns I ever did years ago that I was so proud of it when I first did it was on the the symbiotic nature of Anthony's high flying attacks and having a great guard and or submissions from it. It was very dangerous. That was what made him so dangerous, right? So yeah. if you get put on your back, all right, just keep working on your jujitsu. And it was funny, Rob, how we had spoken about uh, brown belt black belt and in the post fight that one i did watch because obviously yeah. i had rooting interest um i want to hear what he had to say and he says i think i just earned my black belt mm. and i had said he's right there i don't think yeah, he's a black yeah. belt yeah and I, I i so i think uh daniel um vanderlei is his jujitsu coach will probably give him a black belt he deserves it after that, that yeah i think beautiful. he'll i think he'll get it yeah very good i, I, I love that mindset as well um hopefully that it right works hand out. that he hit him with the, oh the precision yeah, that beautiful that's 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 striking like yeah. that counter to be that like just from nowhere just piston so straight it's just so accurate bang his precision right was precise it's not power it's so per- he was so precise with his precision yeah. his precision is really <laughs> precisely precise pre- <laughs> the ah. goal, we missed that guy yeah um, I was so fucking proud of him. Yeah. I'm going to upset the apple cart here, and I think I think commentary, like we started alluding to a little bit here, I think oversell. <laughs> no, I, I agree. She was back. I agree. It's one fight. Like, I, I, think, I need to see more to say. Like, cause oh, they, I don't like that. Yeah, I they, don't they like were the saying, oh, yeah, he's back. He's back. Uh, like, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's let's have another couple of fights. Yeah. 
Um, I, I thought it was I'm, nice. I'm, I'm I, like I, rooting from the fucking sidelines. Yeah. Not on camera. <laughs> I liked I liked the kick from the bottom when he started like a bicycle kick, just done a, a scissors kick, caught him on the way up. I like that little things. The exchange right at the end. Kiesa more so went down. I think off balance more than yeah. anything. But when he came out and hunted the finish, the finish was there, and that's what I really liked about it. He didn't just one thing we've always said about the Pettis brothers was if they get caught in their back, they tend to just turtle, and that's where they lose a lot of their Recently, fights. Yeah. But um, he, he certainly. Certainly, every time he got on the mat, he was looking to uh, create attack. angles, get attack, and really attack submissions. And, I, that, I and against Kies, is somebody who, you know, obviously the Kevin Lee fight didn't go his way. Then he got hit with a dolly. Um, but like, you know, mm -hmm. it didn't made missed weight as well. Uh, Michael Kiesa. he's going up. So he's saying he's going up. But yeah, yeah a good a good win. Um, I love Pez Bravado. Pettis, he, yeah. he seemed like it. it he was really confident again, or something like that. Yeah, I, really I guess he got his swagger back. Yeah, it like, did. That's that's what it looked like. I think uh, I tweeted mm -hmm. at the time, somebody get that man on a box of cereal. <laughs> oh, that was the no, course. Don't. That was the course. Well, can I can I go nerd for a minute? Yes. yes. So we do, <laughs> Have you not Rob been and I talked Serge Pettis versus Anthony, right? One thing for people that don't do jiu-jitsu or maybe white belts that you will learn eventually is the same thing you eventually learn in striking is the, the importance of the center line. Mm. You cannot ever overstate the importance of the center line and the manipulation of said center line, like the knowledge of it. Now, in jiu-jitsu, and or grappling, more so jiu-jitsu though than wrestling, the center line is, I don't know about equally important, but it's fucking really important. If you notice Anthony's work off of his back, it's the way in which he creates. He's always breaking center line. Mm. So it's really hard to attack him from the top. Like if you look at RDA's work against him, it wasn't so much he was smashing him with a million elbows. And then he wasn't taking like crazy damage. It was just a cumulative effect of up, down, up, down, up, down. And then finally his arm's just going stale, you know, for lack of a better word. But his center line manipulations off of his back are brilliant. And that's, you know, blue belt, maybe purple belt type thinking but me watching it like i knew he didn't have that arm and guillotine he wasn't holding on to it to submit him you know what i mean it's all transitional it's a yeah. chess game Beautiful. you know it was, it was wonderful anyway and um, some big standouts of the night as well we just told you, brush out his time yeah. is the essence unfortunately um, a lot of people i think were in shock with round three ko saki Um i think saki paid the price for you know um, not setting up his kicks in this one. He, I, I, am I right in saying he threw the same kick tw uh, twice in a row? Mm, I think so. And he just got caught I didn't with. Watch it. He just got caught with yeah, the perfect was, counter, yeah. the long strike right down the pipe. Um, he didn't respect uh, Roundtree striking. Yeah. It was clear. And it's clear. Beautiful uh, counter by uh, Roundtree as well. Must be said. Wonderful, mm. wonderful punch. Yeah. Uh, two two takeaways. One, I don't think Saki watched a minute of film. Three takeaways. Two, he looked old. Mm. Just looked up. Yeah. yeah. Flipped yeah. unimpressive. Mm. Um, and, and three, distance and MMA striking. We talked about it. Mm. I know I point this way and it goes that way, but um, distance and MMA striking is very clearly different. Yeah. Just very different. Yeah. It's not as though he, he's – Gokan Saki's beaten Daniel Gita. I think he knocked yeah, him yeah. off. Daniel Gita is 6'8". Mm. So it wasn't like he didn't understand length. He yeah. didn't understand MMA – distance difference he just i don't know how did you not know that that's the guy's fucking weapon mm, how did you not yeah, know yeah. that's the one thing you avoid to get hit with his best it's like i don't know i'm trying to think of someone like connor's left hand's different because he's very he's very uh crafty on his way to he's, it. He's, he snakes you charms you without our uh, oh, tools yeah, and then sets up the left. probes everything's yeah. a probe yeah, for, for this hand, yeah. magical left hand he's you know, been gifted with, but with like ground tree, we haven't seen much else. That's yeah. what he does. Yeah. Did you watch like a minute of film on the fucking he, guy? He'll watch that back and he'll be like, "What the hell?" Saki yeah. will watch that back and be like, "Oh, what the hell? What did I do?" Yeah. yeah. And I, he was humble in de in, in yeah. defeat. Yeah. You know? but Said still. nice things. I, I fucking love the guy, but I didn't that night. That wasn't fun. That was poor. Uh, another shout out as well I t again t t unfortunately time is the essence we've got to fight yeah. you this is Paulo Costa how good did Paulo Ooh. Costa look but I think he looked oh. as good as he did because he had an excellent dance partner in Uriah Hall yeah. um, weirdly in the feet that was probably one of the best performances we've seen from Uriah yeah, Hall in yeah. a long time yeah um, yeah his jab was excellent um, 
it makes me think if they I know the style there's there's musings of Stylebender yeah. um, Costa who Stylebender I'm gonna do I got a little conceptual thing I'm working on with them right now mm. um, it'll be cool it should be out soon um, if the jab and straight things land on him like that it'd be that'd be what a fucking interesting stand-up affair that would be, yeah. right? Dana White but, has already said it's not the next fight happening, even though um, it, okay. Adesanya has asked for the fight. Dana White has said, no, uh, that won't be next. It's a great fight, but it's not going to happen. I think they're going to build them. They're both undefeated. You know, yeah. I, I, I get why you, you don't make that. Build them. Uh, you have to announce it, though. Fucking prick. But um, <laughs> Costa, uh, I, there was a stoppage, but I, I told you Uriah would break. I, I knew he'd break. Yeah. Body work. I mean, yeah. that's what the guy does. He throws these terrifying USADA doesn't test him punches to the body that just kill people. Yeah. He's terrifying, that guy. He's, yeah. he's a scary fucking dude. He is either like those Scottish cattle I referenced or he's not pissing into a bottle. There's just... I don't... I'm not buying it. He's jacked. just not. Yeah. I thought... Um, but I but it fucking... Yeah. I wish USADA never even came along. Yeah. I thought Uriah Hall looked good for... I thought he looked better than, than what I thought he would look like. Um, you did. It's just you can't. Yeah. No human body can take that. Yeah, no. It's cost is a freak. Um, another oh. shout out and a great, a great weekend for uh, Alessani's gym in um, New Zealand was Dan Hooker. Dan Ooh. Hooker looked good, oh, my man. Wow. Yeah. As they Holy actually, shit, I agreed with commentary a lot in this one where they said Gilbert Burns was not an easy challenge. Gilbert Burns came He's out so ready to throw down. Gilbert Burns looked on fire, but Daniel Hooker, beautiful that step in knee yet again. Nice body work with the left, and then coming straight back up with the left hook as well. A okay. Beautiful Dude, finish. He's he's good. Mm, he is good. He's tricky, slick, good. Because I know Dorino. Dorino. He's he's a Henry Hoof guy. Mm. I know. Him. He's his jujitsu. He tap. He could probably tap me at, at will. I never rolled with him, but I've seen him roll with really good guys. He's w- literally world class jujitsu wise, and he's got fucking dynamite in his hands too. I- um, dangerous guy, but he he lost. It's pretty, really, uh, pretty handily. It's really coming good though for Hooker. Like he, when he came into the UFC, he, you know, he's losses to Blanco, Yar Rodriguez, and Jason Knight, and it was almost then he's yeah. hit this little purple patch, and he's looked on fire. I think all his, his finishes are first round finishes, only second so, round. Yeah. The Ross Pearson, uh, Dia Casey beating the third round, yeah. But he's absolutely flying, and he's really getting the momentum behind him, and you can see. Yeah. The UFC, if they were to go to New Zealand, Adesanya and Hooker, oh, come in, man, you know, yeah, fantastic. Absolutely. You're welcome, Dana. Um, mm. But yeah, that's the, the, any other fights. He's really good with his length, you know. Any other fights that you think you want to talk about just briefly there? Got, one, uh, got I got one. Uh, just the the tough the tough finale main, uh, main yeah, event. Yeah, that one. Adesanya. Yeah, go for it. Gonna kill me here. I just want to say, marvel at the beauty of that guy's striking. He's yeah. unbelievable. Everyone just. I'll help. I'll help you, Marvel. But marvel at it. He is. That's one of the. We're talking about not just that. And I'll say part B in a second. But just realize that is about as good of MMA striking as you may see. Yeah. At that. At that weight too. I mean, you could put some of the one thirty five ish, one twenty like DJ guys. They're so much, but they're sixty pounds lighter, right? So. As impressive as Tyson was, it doesn't look like uh, Lomachenko, yeah. right? Right? They don't move the same. There's gravity's against you if you believe in gravity. <laughs> That's an inside joke. All right. So, um, sorry, but Israel, it's it's not just that because I think he already had that. Although I do think his MMA striking is improving. His grappling and anti grappling, if you will, looked fucking fantastic. Yeah. yeah. He is. He barely missed this beautiful elbow guillotine, and I'm gonna I'm gonna let him know how he could have finished it for mm. next time because mm. uh, that guy's fun to watch, man. He is really fun. He gets, he gets it, doesn't he? That's that's what that's what I see. He just gets it. Gets MMA striking. He, he gets it. What I'm gonna he say here, Jam, I'm, smart, I'm gonna be the rude mm. guy, and I'm gonna cut you off because okay. time is of the essence. Okay. You will, okay. you guys will be recording. This is out Tuesday. Say hello, Tuesday listeners. If if Brendan can join, if me. Brendan is available on Wednesday, he's allowed to go into more depth, mm. and you're hopefully that uh, um, video will be released, and he's allowed to talk Ooh. about it. A little uh, bit more it'll be out well. by then. Oh, yeah, I might have it out tonight. Okay. Oh, sweet. So hopefully, I'm not too sure. I'm not going to put you on the spot while we're uh, recording here, but hopefully you'll be with live for the uh, with live with Rob for the live chat on Wednesday evening. Uh, but yeah, Brendan, my, my schedule. I've missed you. I've missed your little face in my life. Um, your breakdown of me and Rob fighting was terrible. Um, <laughs> I'll let you away with it. But uh, pleasure. I, I don't know. We don't. That's something we don't discuss. Yeah. 
We'll fight. Whatever. We'll fight. Yeah. We'll, put on. we'll stick on Facebook Live. I picked you to win, you fuck. What more do you want? Yeah. yeah well, you put it down <laughs> to sloppy striking and size. That's all you put it down to. Oh. Can we spar when I come over? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. But no, Brendan, honestly, it's a pleasure talking to you. Um, I miss you. It's, it's great to be back and get, get I know. People probably right. think we're like, there's any seriousness to this yeah. at all. Yeah. Uh, nothing but love for you guys yeah. and my, all my people. Welcome back to Obviously Fight Talk. And we are joined by um, Chris Fields, who is one of the biggest names in Irish mixed martial arts. A pioneer, some might mm. say, Robert. Yeah. Uh, cornered me at a show that sounds more intimidating than it actually was and said I've got this kid in my gym he's the future of mixed martial arts um, and he introduced me to a young guy called Ian Gary um, I actually seen Ian fight the first time was a K1 bout um, since then Ian has had five mixed martial arts fight I've been nothing but impressed I've said to him from the start want to get you on the show so I'm delighted to say we're now joined by an SBG swords killer in Ian Gary so uh, Ian Welcome along for the first time. How's things? Are you good? Yeah, not bad, me man. Not bad at all. Um, I've been telling Rob about you for a while. Yeah, and again. All the time. This drips down from Chris Fields. So, even hearing that, Ian, straight off, I want to talk a little bit about how you got into MMA and stuff like that. But even hearing that type of praise coming from somebody like Chris Fields, this was even before, I think, you, you didn't even have a, an actual a, a MMA bout. So, Boy, yeah. how strong is that, or how, how um, impressive, I suppose, is that, that Chris Fields is speaking so highly of you? It, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a weird one, because I always, I've always been sporty, and... Uh, I've always been good at sports, but like, like when I done hurl and in guy, like I was good at them, but I was never the best. Mm. And like, I went to the, I went down to the gym and I was going down there and I was like, geez, I like this. I've always like, because obviously the boxing, I was like the best for a while, and then there was, I just kind of fell out of love with it. And then um, I came to the stage where I, I finally joined, and I was like, right, this is good. But then, like, you, you don't, you never think you're the best. You always. You always have to be told like like you're not the best, you're not the best. But, like you never think you're the best until you like Connor. He he's the best. He's officially done done what not no one else has done until the weekend. Yeah. Um you're the best. So but um once I heard that I was like, Ooh <laughs> he, t- he, t- he told me one night, he was like, um He's like, kid, you're going to be something special. And I was like, nah, I don't believe it. You're, you're talking shit. <laughs> and then um, he was like, no, what? And then after a few fights, like, you can kind of see what I can kind of see what he means. But it, you still don't believe it. Like, you still don't. You just, you're hoping for it. You're, you are. But, like, it's amazing to have someone of his stature and all the other lads he brings. And, like, even Colin and all, like, even people like that even considering it. Like, it's crazy. Humbling. Let's let let's let's go back before we get into actual SBG though. So you're saying obviously football, hurling, stuff like that. Obviously, um, for American listeners, these are the traditional sports of Ireland where we batter one another with wooden sticks. <laughs> with sticks. <laughs> a kick in the kick in the shit. A check. A check is gonna do nothing when you begin. <laughs> like I I play midfield, so like my shins have been battered over the years. So that ref throwing in that ball and just instantly swinging at someone. I used to, I used to uh, go in with my worst hurl. Um, I used to have two or three ready like on the sideline and I'd always have one of the lads holding my, my best hurl in their hand on the sideline. And I'd just try to break, that, so break my hurl across with some of that chin in the first shot. <laughs> instantly, so he's like, so I'm like, yeah, okay, now you're trying to get one back and then the whole time you're trying to think about getting it back on you. It was already mentally... So from a young age, you were a dirty whore. <laughs> <laughs> But how do what was the first discipline combat wise martial arts that you got into? Because I know you do have a, quite a you, you spoke there at the start about boxing, but what what gravitated you towards martial arts first? Uh, boxing. Um, I always said to uh, my dad I wanted to do boxing, and um, he was always telling me he'd bring me down, he'd bring me down, he'd bring me down. Like, but like he was busy, and I said to him one day I was like, right, look, I'm going down. Um, there's one, one close to Nana's, I'll walk down. And he goes, no, don't be silly, I'll bring you down. And uh, he brought me down to, this, to a club and I, I enjoyed it. But then I was too young, so I just got down and went down for to find out what it was. Mm-hmm. And then a club opened up um, only 
like literally a five minute walk from my house. And we just moved into the estate and I was like, I'm going down. And my dad was like, okay. My mom was like, no, <laughs> no pecking cans. You're not doing it. You're not going. I was like, I'm going. Yeah. And uh, I walked down to the club, went in and then I was, uh, I fell in love with it instantly. And what age were you then in? 10. Mm -hmm. So I started fighting when I was 11. I had my first, I, I fought, um, I had I fought consistently nearly every two weeks <laughs> in, uh, up until the age I was like 14 and then I just like, right, I'm done. I'm going to move on to something else. It kind of club members started leaving and coaches started leaving because they were getting older and it just deteriorated as a, a club and I wasn't as into it as much as I was. So, but um, I was under like the, the first day I went down, I done um, was, I done uh, pads, and um, we done it with a coach called Ski Mullen, Ski Mullen, uh, Liam Mullen. So we, mm. I, to me, you ski, um, fought for world titles as a boxer when he was um, young and in his prime. But um, he, he came, he brought me over, done some pads with me, and he instantly took me under his wing, and. Uh, if you if you ever see one of my comments, there's a fella called Ken Dixon. He comments on my on my status, and he he wrote one of my first my first fight saying didn't expect anything else because mm -hmm. that's where I got the left hook from. Oh yeah. Um, and he uh, he basically taught me everything, and he just we just clicked instantly. And he, every night I'd go down and do pads with him, and I'd strap on strap on the gloves, and he put on his little body body pad. And, stand here and hold his hands up and we just we'd work and that was for four years straight and I loved every second of it you, you said you moved on then right so I know myself I, I started on the sidelines you, you got into a, you have a judo background as well so what what, what yeah. gravitated you towards judo then so I it was it was in between then I was taking time to go try do hurling and gaff because I'd only I'd moved school and I was like right I'm gonna go do hurling and gaff full on just to get it because I I was like right I'll uh I'll get in close with this group of lads now. And um, basically, that's what happened. And then I went, um, my, uh, one, of my, one of my best mates' dad, one of the lads in the, my group of friends, his dad was, uh, is a judo instructor and teaches uh, judo in uh, the PSLC, the Full Managed Sports and Leisure Center, which is a 20 second walk from my school. Mm. And uh, he's a, and now a six time black belt um, in judo, and he's an animal. And a lovely lad, so I went down to him one day and he knew obviously I had boxing experience and his son's done boxing and uh, I went to him and I said, Ray, I want to join. He goes, yeah, no problem. We'll get you, uh, we'll get you kitted out and we'll uh, have you joined in. And then in two and a half years, I had a black belt because I went in and smoked all the divisions <laughs> with... Uh, I literally had, like, I kept saying to him, like, I'm, get, I'm getting an next belt. I'm getting an next belt. And he was like, Ian, you have to wait, like, so-and-so and so-and-so. And so. I was like, I don't care. I won it. And, uh, yeah, we jumped on. I think it was about three years. And I uh, went in and just done my thing. And it was good. And it, it's a different, it's a different, completely mm. big difference from boxing. Like, it's not the same at all. Like, you're talking about standing there and banging with someone. And then you're like, right, this guy's kicking the, kicking the ankle off and trying to throw me over his shoulder. And... Somehow you have to manage this twirl or spin in midair to kind of land land in a way that you don't get don't get scored on. You're like maybe I might go back to boxing. <laughs> <laughs> so, but um, I do. So yeah, and then that was that was in fifth year. So that was when I was about sixteen. I started maybe seventeen, and then after I finished my leaving cert, um. Went to my mom again, sat down, said, "Right, I'm going to the I'm going to do MMA." She goes, "No." <laughs> she goes, "Tell you what, convince your nanny you can go, and I'm going." I was like, "I'm not convincing anyone. I'm just going." Mm. And uh, I went down, and yeah, just I went down to SBG Concord in Italy, and just more because, and this is only when swords had just opened, so I didn't yeah. really know anything about swords or anything like that. I knew obviously knew Chris and Tom because. Such a you're talking like top level lads in Ireland, but um, 
I didn't, I, I just for myself, I was a grand on now with a good, good background in boxing, so I don't know what swords would be like. I know Concord has, yeah. would have members there, and then I went down there, and it was just such a stress traveling from, I live out in Pomarnica, mm. so for me traveling to all the way out to Bluebell and back every day for an hour and a half class, two hours maybe in a row, it was just a stress. Yeah. And, um, Probably the, the greatest gift of my life was that that stress because I landed myself in a gym where I'm blessed to have the people around me like Chris and Tom being the two coaches you couldn't ask for better coaches like you a pioneer of the sport in Chris and then Tom is one of the most badass black belts there is like mm. and then as you said there's something in the water down there so. All right, they got, got to, they got to start bottling in swords. I think like, I, I, w- I would go out to swords to get my water. That's how good it is. Because like you train partners you have, you're talking about Chris and Tom there, and, and it's one thing I want to talk about a couple of your fights. But it was quite funny your most recent fight that actually isn't up yet on YouTube. Mm-hmm. The uh, your your victory over Cunningham at Clan Wars 32 in the Ulster Hall. It was a one stage you were on the mat and and you were doing your thing. You were in position. And I could hear Chris and Chris, um, Chris and Tom's um, instructions. They're always so calm and precise. I have to say, they're one of the best corners I've ever listened to um, in their coaching. Their coaching is honestly second to none. They're phenomenal coaches. But it was quite funny because you were whatever you were doing, and Chris was shouting. I can't remember exactly what the instruction was, but he was shouting instruction at you. And let's just say for that brief moment, you weren't doing it. And then you just heard. Ian and he and that Ian just it was like you, the switch in your head went oh I better listen here and he gave you the instruction and you done exactly that and you progressed your position but yeah that, that's He's, what uh, it was about if that was on the side of the cage and he was trying to tell me to um he was trying to wall walk with his feet when I had mount and he was trying to tell me to switch my um my hips kind of with my feet to mm. get him away from the cage but when he man when he shouts that Ian at you <laughs> yeah you know yourself, you're going to listen. Mm. Regardless of how pumped up you are, you know if you get out of that, you're losing that fight. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, uh, I'll, I'll take the win in there so he can't be as angry out, out the back if, if that does happen. But talk to us about SPG Swords now. Let's move on to that. So let's even look at your first fight. It's hard to believe that your first fight um, was in November of 2017. This was over Andreas uh, Lagze and it was up in Clan Wars 30. Now, Again, I, I hate the clip because I say a big right hand down the Pope, down the pope. instead of pipe. And uh, Phil oh, Campbell yeah. does not let me away with that. But no, like, when we when, when when I look back at that, I remember when you got the knockout, it's a stunning knockout. And uh, when you got the knockout, you ran um, in front of myself and Phil Campbell. I, I mentioned Phil in case anyone doesn't know. Phil is my co-commentator and just the word the ant and deck of Irish MMA. He's uh, a badass is what he is. He's, he's absolutely a great bloke. Uh, Phil Campbell, one of the nicest human beings you'll ever meet in your life. But I distinctly remember you standing above us when you got the knockout and you said, um, welcome to the new age or something along that, that lines. A con- to do with the song yeah so chris chris had told me before that fight um we were talking so we were we were just talking about like what we wanted to do in the fight like it just not 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 like a game plan or anything. he just goes remember like this is what we want to do you want to go out here and make a statement mm. that's what you wanted to do and um he sat down and he goes by the way i've been thinking um y- your walkout song i had one picked i had um I had uh, Give Me The Loop by Biggie um, chosen because it's, it's a groovy tune and Chris goes, song. it is a good song, yeah, Chris good goes, song, uh, walk out walk out to uh, Radioactive by um, The Imagine Dragons. Mm. And it's a good tune, but he, he specifically said, because when that, ba- when, that, when that thing hits and it goes, welcome to the new age, and I was like, yeah, okay, you got me hooked on it, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> and... Uh, I heard him, I heard Phil, the, the, the reason I screamed that was because when I walked by, I went to look at Chris and I could hear him there, Chris, uh, Phil go, ladies and gentlemen, have we just seen the future? Uh, <laughs> Who's Phil now? Welcome to the new way. Yeah, remember so but then again like this is so that was your debut as well on clan wars and clan wars is a big stage for anyone obviously again listeners outside of ireland clan wars would probably be the biggest regional show in ireland and it's something oh, that's it's, it's something that's stepping up like you fought now three times on, on, on clan wars and you know you had a big win over tyg lanan and tyg had a big win at the last clan wars become the light no, welterweight champion mm. and i 
I, I, I queried the edit that BBC used when Ty got the victory. It cut to you celebrating. Mm, that was at the end of it. They, they're, either, they're either being really smart with yeah. that, okay? They're either being really smart with that. And I'm trying to get a second, but get, get a rematch <laughs> on for that. Or um, they were just, they didn't know. But, yeah. um, which I obviously assumed it was. But I'm gonna, we're going to go on the one and say that they're being really smart with Conspiracy. that, okay? Yeah. Um, that was after... Uh, Callum, surely had to be after Callum's fight, was it? No, no, no. no. I, man, I was gone. My heart was out of my chest when he yeah. nicked up on that armbar. Oh, I yeah. was sweating. Um, I knew it wasn't nice. happening. I was still sweating. Yeah. Uh, it was after the Mickey Mickey Doran came off round fight but when the bell. Yeah. Oh, we've just got to pause here. The, the joy of technology. So the we'll, wonders. We'll hold that thought of that's just when the bell went. Ian is having a chat to himself now. You there? Yeah, we are. Sorry, I just broke Rob's phone. Rob and... Yeah, so you were saying it was just... What are you doing? It was just after the... Um, like a war. And I just yeah. stood up and started clapping and was blown away by it. It was uh, like just the whole atmosphere of that fight, everything. I just started clapping, but... Uh, not a, they edited not a, that beautifully. I, I pointed that out uh, straight away to my dad. My dad said he goes... And pointed out and when I had it up on the screen he just goes get that rematch over like, oh, calm down um, calm down and, and this this, but, this is the thing though Ian like I was talking to you I grabbed you in the cage as well and we were saying so the next Clam Wars Clam Wars 33 is in November now they are mentioning they're playing with the idea of um, of a Galway card as well mm. but that falls in around your 21st and of course you said you don't want to fight for the title because it's against somebody that you train with regularly um, it's basically a team member yeah like, so he is. He's a team member. Realistically here, Tiglan and rematch, he has fought obviously on CRC as well. You've got the win over uh over Tyg. Tyg looked uh, ultra impressive uh up in Clam he did. Wars. He looked good. Um so the rematch there, is that something that interests you? Uh yeah, well obviously yeah. Um but uh as I've said, I I have to watch my words here because I'll get the head kicked off <laughs> if I uh I start running my mouth. <laughs> um no, like I'm obviously I'm down for that. You know, they can't want strap is something, whether it be a welterweight, whether it be a middleweight, whether it be a light, uh, light, uh, super lightweight, it doesn't mm. matter. Um, it's something I want on uh, on my list. It's, I've got it. I said I have I have a list uh, read out of what I want, and that's on it. And um, I don't care what weight it's at. If I could make sixty one. <laughs> I, I and to, to get a title fight, I would. You know what I mean? Like mm, cut a leg I, off the side. If you. I could fight a heavyweight for the title, I would. I wouldn't care. But uh, yeah, no, it's all. It's obviously something I'm looking at. I mean, I fought the, the Budo title that I have over in England was seventy four kilos. Yeah. Um. So it's not like I can't make it. Mm. Like it's not like I'm walking around dying trying to make weight. Like I make weight easy. So yeah, I'm I'm game. But like the big man, the big man calls the shots. If he just says yes and then tells me he does. I don't have any input in what I fight. Mm. I'll send him. I'll send him dates. I'll send him things that I've seen. Clam Wars is fighting here. Like CRC is fighting. There's Cage Cage Warriors Academy. I'll screenshot, send them all to him, and then he'll just go. He'll just send me back on. Here's the date. Here's the opponent. We're done. I think that's the way it should be as a coach. Mm. So for people who haven't watched uh, Ian fight, it's all Ian's fights are up on YouTube except the most recent ones, which yeah. I'd imagine will be uploaded in the next couple of days. Yeah. But Ian, yeah, if you yeah. if you had to describe yourself um, it as a fighter, like, it sounds like a job interview. Yeah, this is a, no. But if you for people who haven't seen you, it, like because it's it's something I I Rob was watching a lot of your fights when I said look we got to get Ian on the show. Rob started watching your fights and Ian, uh, you, you were sort of saying. You know, you remind him of somebody, but he couldn't quite, uh, quite put his finger on it. What style of fighter are you? Like for me, when I, it's something that hit home with me leading up to your Clan Wars thirty two fight. I was chatting to you, and you said I always come to put on a show. This time round, I don't care if I put on a show. I just want to win. Now, in saying that, yeah. um, you put on a show. Um, yeah. Your technique was exceptional that night, but you were all business. Um, but if yeah, you had to describe yourself as a fighter, or, or you know, to someone to tune in to watch it, how would you describe yourself as a fighter? Um, a white Johnny Jones. <laughs> Lovely. Basically. Lovely. Uh, now that's the that, that that's the goal. I mean, that guy is the goat. 
I don't care what, what, what you're talking about, whether we on on steroids, on PDs, he's the go. That's who you should be looking at. He's, I mean, he basically is the baddest man on the planet. I mean, he just mm. knocked out Cormier. Like, I mean, mm. don't care. He is. Now, whether you, you go on and there's, there's the talk of him being a piece of shit or not, he's not. He's the best fighter that's ever been in that cage. I don't care. But um, I'm, I describe myself as a striker who is falling deeply, deeply, deeply in love with the game of uh, submission grappling. Um, like it. To an extent where it's get, becoming addictive. Uh, it's, I just would like, I don't want to be describing myself as mm. anything. Like, as when, when Roy McDonald was the next up and coming thing, people were saying he's the most well-rounded fighter, he's the first pure martial artist. That's what I want to be mm. known as. A pure martial artist. One thing you did say um, about training, that you kind of picked up boxing, then you picked up judo and all this, it almost sounded like it was a plan, but it didn't sound like it was a plan. It didn't sound like you really planned to move to MMA. You just done these things on their own, then eventually you came together. Was that ever, like, at what point did you think, okay, I have all these skills, I'm going to go and do MMA? When were you thinking that? So, me and my mates used to, like, were addicted to UFC. Like, we... Mm. We'd all get, we'd all sit down and watch it on the weekend, and then we'd all come in and talk about it in school. Um, and obviously, I'd, I'd, I'd be the one that they'd all come in and ask because obviously, I, I, I'm the one, the obsession. Mm. And uh, it kind of went from the boxing, and then I was uh, once I once I was doing the judo. So in about fourth year, fifth year, I I was properly addicted. And I went, I'm doing it after my leaving was finished. Um, I didn't want to commit to something that I knew I was going to do every single night. And my mom be down my throat. Um, for everyone outside of Ireland, Irish mothers yeah, yeah. are relentless. Yeah. So um, that stereotype is true. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, so no, I, I kind of had an idea of that I wanted to go into. I just had to wait until um, basically the time was right. And I know, like being young, I wanted to make sure I got my black belt. I wanted to then have that under my belt and then say right. Let's go do it. And then I didn't want to be half arse or something. I didn't want to go, oh, well, I'll continue doing judo and my leaving, sir. And then I'll just go down maybe once or twice a week. Um, I went down and it was just full on from there. And it's, it's been every day, any day, all day, whenever I can for the last, what, year and a half now? The progression in that time, though, is like, don't get me wrong, you were ultra impressive back in November, but to look at your performance from November to your most recent one up in Belfast, it the evolution, it's always something I point out when you're watching a young fighter to go, mm. man, in the space of like three months mm. to see this guy, he's going to be like a new fighter. And like, I yeah. honestly, um, you're going to kill me because you hate when I bring this up, but like when you lost to Andreas, I thought, this is going to be, you though. You got clipped in that ring, you did. <laughs> this, <laughs> but I was like, this is honestly going to be, I think, the best thing for you as well. And I honestly think the knockout you got over uh, Smooth, what a name, by the way, for Schmood. the fighter. Oh, stop it. It, <laughs> yeah. was like, it was like he went and changed yeah. that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, uh, and, then, and then, of course, the, the victory over Cunningham. I just think it's, it's not that you weren't focused, but I just think it's, it's that obsession has even tightened. And the camp you're training out of now, like I, I just can't wait to watch your career unfold. Um, yeah. And we're gonna have to sign some sort of contract that I have to be in commentary or, or something when you get, you know what I mean, keep going that way. But um, talk about it. I just, I just wanted to get you on here just to. I didn't want to wait until you know the explosion of Ian Gary because yeah. this, this is, this is, um, this is somebody I've wanted to speak to and get you on the show here and introduce you to to our listeners and mm. um, get people to know you. And like I said, go on YouTube, type in Fight Star followed by Ian Gary and all of Ian's fights is up there it's not going to take long because they don't normally go that long um, but just sit back watch unbelievable technique unbelievable power beautiful judo and now the the, the jiu jitsu and the, your transitions in jiu jitsu Tom King Chris Fields take, take a time. bow um, but Ian an absolute pleasure getting you on the first of many appearances um, I look forward to seeing you back in there my man and uh, yeah thanks a million for coming on for obviously Fight Talk no problem, lads. Anytime. Um, so there you are, ladies and gentlemen. Like I said, go check them out. Let's see you, Gary. Thanks a million.
So welcome back to Obviously Fight Talk and scoring the hat-trick, making his third appearance on Obviously Fight Talk. Um, the raw oh. bastard himself, Will fucking Flurry, fights oh. on Bellator 203. He's flying to Italy uh, where he t- takes on the undefeated Alan Amadowski. So Will, firstly, welcome back to Obviously Fight Talk. What's up, motherfuckers? Um, raw bastard in, in name and nature again. This is another new opponent, Bellator two hundred three. So the moniker of people just pull out against Will Flurry continues. But what do we know about your opponent, Will, coming into this one? He's five and zero. He has five knockouts. Um, come try and knock the fuck out of me. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> well, that's Will Furry. Thanks a million for joining us. <laughs> he's uh, fighting fucking mainly on the Italian scene. And he's half handy, obviously, if he's won five fights in a row. Um, he's fairly small. He's 5'11. Mm. Fucking seems like a tough enough lad. Seems to gas in the second round most of the time. Uh, I could see it being over pretty early, to be honest. I could see him over committing in the catch. But look. I oh, can only guarantee an ass whoop, and I can't tell you how. It seems like this opponent bores you a little bit. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say bores. Like, look, fuck, man. It's like, I'm definitely pumped for this. Like, I'm mm. definitely, you know, this is different. It's Bellator now, and it's fucking, it's my first legit fucking opportunity to get out there. Um, But it's a guy I can easily beat. I'm like, there's risk. There's fucking risk in every fight. Mm. I just know what I can do, and I fed to myself to get it done. That's something, obviously, if you listen to the show regularly, you've been on with us, Will, and we've talked about, you know, um, the, the pull-outs, the joke that I said there, but as much as it, it, it's an infuriating joke at this point for you, um, but like you said, Bellator, this is a huge, huge opportunity. Um, so has that been prepared? Because don't take this the wrong way, man. You always come, you're always in shape, but I'm just looking at the pictures you're putting up um, from the gym, and, man, you look ready to go here. Did, would you say yeah, best shape of your like, career? You know what it is? Genuinely, it's I've trained less for this fight. <laughs> I've actually just rested way more, and I've had to like I've been working a good bit recently, and now I've been training the balls off it still, obviously. Mm. But I was training three, four times a day, and doing crazy shit the whole time, like ridiculous stuff that your body just can't keep up with. Mm. And I think your nervous system just shuts down, and then everything you eat starts to get stored. So I just like train hard, you know, most of the time, twice a day, sometimes once a day, and did kind of five, six days a week. But when I was recovering, I was just away from the gym and I had to be away. Mm. So I think the breaks kind of helped me a little bit. And just this whole camp, it's been real like, you train, you improve, you train, you improve, you train, you improve. And that's been great. So, yeah, fucking, I'm in better shape than I have been in a while. Like, I was in great shape in Africa too. Mm. But nobody's seen any of that shit yet. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, I'm a little bit leaner. I'm coming into this one a little bit lighter. Uh, But it's probably through more breaks than anything, to be honest, like, it's not like all the times I was a fat bastard, I wasn't, you know, guiding and training and shit. Like, but <laughs> I don't know. I just seem to be a fat gun sometimes. Like, I can't put, like, I wish I knew why. Um, but is there something different? Do you feel something different? The fact that it's Bellator. They're going to be around. You fought obviously yeah, on, on Brave. Like, you fought on EFC. But what, what's what's different with Bellator here? It's bigger. It's you know, you're kind of fulfilling like a little bit of a dream getting a fight on the second biggest promotion in the world. So to me, it's huge. Like, look, this guy, this is my first major, major. Like, I fought with TFC, I fought with Brave. They're class, they're great shows. But this is by far the biggest opportunity I've been given. And it's going to fucking take a hell of a man to come take it away from me. And like, TFC fights, the Brave fights, again, I just, I don't know if it's overconfidence or what, but I feel like, look, I'm going to beat you. And that's how I feel about this guy. But there's always that thing of like, put on that performance now. Everybody's watching. So I'm in shape to fucking put on a ridiculous performance. But is that something as well? That's what I was, I was going to ask you. You've led me into it beautifully. Is when you fight, because you talk about, you know, people always pull out and, you know, the opportunities and it, the, the bright light doesn't seem to shine on Will Furry for some reason, the spotlight, if you like. Is that almost like a chip on a sh- your shoulder for you where you got to go, you almost have to go in and win your fight spectacularly to get people talking about you more? Yeah, you can look at it that way. But like... <laughs> There's definitely something in my soul that wants to get some of that back. Like, mm. um, but again, I think avoiding being bitter is the big thing. Like, mm. and even just avoiding like fucking the shit mentality that you can let drag you down from that. Like, like oh, I've trained for eight weeks and some guy didn't show up. Now I don't get paid anything and I get no exposure. That fucking sucks. What are you gonna do about it? Mm. Get on with your fucking career. Get on with your life. Do fucking you know, 
the next time you get the chance, win. And so far, every time I've gotten a chance, I've gone in and fucking whooped ass. And I took whatever chance was available. I fucking fought K1 in boxing and did a load of shit. Mm. But look, this is legit. Like this, you know, is there a chip on my shoulder? Yeah, probably. But do I let it fucking make me bitter? Do I let it stop me working? No. And the thing is, eventually, people will see what this is. I don't want to be a fucking sob story either. Like, yeah. And then I feel like I do complain about this shit too much. Like, yeah, I've had a load of pullouts. That's not what defines me. Mm. Being a great fucking fighter is what defines me. Mm. So it's not what happens. It's how you react to it. And I feel like so far, yeah, I'm fucking pissed with a load of shit that's happened. But I'm not going to let it pull me down. Like, mm. it's going to just spur me on. And it has. Like, look at me. Like, I got elbowed in the back of the head 14 times in that show in Africa, yeah? Where's everybody else from that show? Mm-hmm. How many times has those guys fought since, yeah? If anybody had a fucking excuse to go whinge afterwards, this lad. No, mm-hmm. I'm signing the Bellator now. Fuck the rest of you. That's, does, that's, does, go ahead, does it feel like a turning point now signing with Bellator as in as you said you had all them pullouts you feel like maybe now signing with such a respected promotion that that's going to change you're going to have consistent fights you're going to be able to get those fighters who aren't going to pull out late notice yeah I hope so anyway like mm. again this first lad <laughs> wasn't a great example of that <laughs> but like in general if you're dealing with lads of this caliber you shouldn't be getting pullouts mm. um, so I hope but I can't dictate what somebody else does man it's something that I, I've told you this story as well when you were fighting um, where I was watching you walking around Dun Stars. I was watching the fight on my phone and I, yeah, I screamed yeah. out Will fucking Flurry. Yeah. Um, and that's... It, it, it's something I think that you, what you're saying about you know fighters pull out because it is a talking point and I think the bigger weight class as you go up it is harder to find um, a replacement somebody who's fighting at your level because if anyone hasn't seen you fight Will like, you're a world class fighter. So it's very different than... And I don't mean any disrespect, but, uh, you know, like I know you had a lot of pullouts at amateur as well, but it's very different when it's, uh, you know, younger guys fighting and they can just find, you know, ring around the gyms or you got a guy weighing whatever. That's not going to happen with you because you are a genuine world-class fighter who just hasn't had that opportunity as you're, you're having this weekend. So I think it's a little harder than that. And I, I love your attitude that that shouldn't define you. And, like, you're on a path. And fuck me, man. If I was somebody to stand in your way and try to stop you, I don't want to be on that path because you're somebody who has just... You can tell it in your voice. Like, you're in fight week now. It's a couple of days. But the intensity in you. And, like, I, I just can't wait to watch you make that walk um, and, and just see you perform on the biggest stage. Cheers. Thanks, lads. Um, yeah, well, look... You know, thanks. Basically, I'm not sure what the question in there. <laughs> no, it wasn't really. Like, I'm in the comments and fuck it all. Keep it all. <laughs> thanks, man. Good work. But uh, now, um, on, honestly, it's again, and, and for people who haven't seen Will Flurry fight, what would you tell? What would you tell them? How are you? How are you selling this fight to people? Tune in to see the raw bastard. But apart from that, what's the sell point? Yeah, look. Every time I fight, you get all of me. That's you know, like uh, I'm not like an amazing, amazing athlete. I'm somebody who goes in and gets a fucking job done. And, like, it's kill or be killed. And I think I'm way more aware of that than everybody else out there, you know. Like, I have that mentality. When I sign up, I'm preparing to kill somebody. And I know they're trying to gonna, they're gonna try and kill me. It's intense. But I love the intensity of that. I love the, like, fact that there is some lad, a Macedonian fella living in Italy, that's been training for the last six or eight weeks to fucking come and give me the best show he can. But I'm ready. And that's what, like, I was saying, look, yeah, what more can I say? You get all of me. Like, it's gonna, he's gonna have to fucking kill me to get me out of there. You know, I honestly don't know what I wouldn't do to win this fight. Like, and that's what this is. That's what Will Flurry is. That's what being a raw bastard is. Like, cause it's just like, fuck it. I'll give you the most honest effort I can. I train fucking with a ton of effort. I just get in there and get it fucking done if I can't, like, you know, and I don't see anyone on this roster at all been able to stop me like but that's what they, you know that's like it's a fucking cruel game in loads of ways yeah and you don't dictate the result you just dictate your effort like so you get in you fucking do everything you can and that's what I get in and do like and as well with it 
Bellator obviously being such a big promotion, what's what's the game plan? Because we know uh, a teammate of yours, of course, James Gallagher, they reckon he's a, a fighter too, possibly away from a title shot as well in Bellator. Yeah, like a- so is that the idea as well? You know, you get in there, you get a big win with the pull of James and yourself and then as well other fighters from other gyms around Ireland, including SBG. Is it get Bellator back here, or, or, or do you want to do you want to fly the world with Bellator and showcase your your skills outside of Ireland? You are, man. Honestly, I'm genuinely as happy to travel as I am to fight in Dublin. I think fighting in Dublin would be an amazing experience. I'd love to have fought in the tree arena. I was supposed to have three times, and yeah. I still haven't. Um, you know, I've jogged down by it like kind of once a week, mm. and I'm always like fucking soon, soon. <laughs> yeah. But it hasn't happened yet. And look. If the next fight's in America, grand. I get to go see America, mm. you know. But it'll be amazing to fight in Dublin, yeah. And hopefully, yeah, look, if I go smash this lad, get a bit of exposure, call out somebody a bit bigger. Hopefully we can get that fight matched up in Dublin and it'll be a big one for my career. But you don't, you know, you don't have total control over things like that at this point in time. And fuck, man, I'm happy to go and fight wherever. Bellator have some huge uh, names at middleweight. Is there anyone that sticks out in your mind that even from like a fan, like you like the way they fight? Is there anyone a real dream fight at middleweight at Bellator? Yeah, I'll, I'll do that bit of talking when I'm done with this guy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But yeah, there's some names in my mind. Um, you- what's the plan fight week? Where when are you flying out? When what, what's the what's the agenda? So uh, John Phillips comes over tomorrow night. He's been in mm-hmm. Cardiff for a few or over in Wales for a few weeks and. Um, I fly out with him on Wednesday morning and then I think God bless John Kavanagh gets over on Thursday at some point. Okay. Uh, so like I think I fly over and do a few photo shoots and probably like an interview. I don't know. I don't know exactly what I have to do when I get over there. But there's not that much way to go out, and it's just water load while you're flying out there. Mm-hmm. Enjoy the few days over there. Um, uh, way in, we're fast, and then we're staying down till the Wednesday after. Oh, nice. Uh, <laughs> <Captain> Phillips, so <laughs> best <laughs> there of luck good to in that one. <laughs> best of luck. You'll be fighting a heavyweight with all the uh, pizza after that. Yeah, yeah, mm. this is it, man. Yeah. But uh, we're wait- worried about what way I'm gonna come back. <laughs> <laughs> Great uh, shape now, but we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, man, I mean this, and you know, you, you end shows, you talk to people, and I'm never insincere, but um, I have to say, I mean this. I, I fucking watching you years. I've called a few of your fights, man, and Jesus Christ, I couldn't be rooting. I'm a fan of watching your fights. So I'll take that you? away. But just, I wish you the best of luck. Um, right. You've earned every fucking inch you've got, um, and I hope there's plenty no, of miles no, yeah, ahead. Yeah, but look, you earn, but you earn it in the cage. You know, so fuck it, job to do, lads. Yeah. And I'll go over and get it done. Don't worry. And we'll come back and we'll do a fucking victory interview afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, man, for the support. I really fucking genuinely appreciate that, lads. No, we mean it, man. Yeah. Best of luck to you. And Cheers, uh, thanks a million Cheers. for taking the time as well. Being no fully week and all. Thanks a million, Will. Best of luck. All the best, all right. Take care. Cheers, lad. See you later. Thanks. Uh, there you go. Never asked. Should have asked. Just as we hit Blump, have to get a link out. The Will Flurry t shirt. Oh class. my it's god! Class. It's the the number two MMA T-shirt in Ireland after the OFT T-shirt. After the OFT T-shirt. <laughs> no, it is a class T-shirt, though, isn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's okay. absolutely phenomenal. Um, Will is it? We've had him on a few times now. Will, as I said at the start there of the interview, was hat trick. But uh, great, great really, fighter. Yeah. You can really sense that he just wants this fight to happen, and he just wants to get that win in Bellator. You can. That's yeah. what you can sense. He's just dying for that. To I happen. like though that he's not. You know. The pull out thing it is a story because it's a story like how does it happen so yeah, often he, it's, it's he has crazy. a good mentality about it he's yeah. not saying oh like unlucky me he's saying this shit happens yeah. I'm fucking pissed off about it but I'm gonna get you know, get the job done absolutely looking forward to it huge fan um, that was oh, a fun show though welcome Fury. back yeah, Noel welcome back Noel's back in the chair feels like I haven't been away yeah except, actually yeah yeah except I'm gonna go home now and have some nappies to change and all that mm. best feeling in the world though man were you holding um, it in or something or no I was holding yeah. it in yeah I'm wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> got me with a good one um, so yeah this has been obviously Fight Talk episode 114 um, if you're listening to this you're going oh it's over don't worry Rob has been doing a YouTube live chat yes, every got, week yeah. with different guests Could be a bit, and I gotta say Rob say it to you again commendable job you've Thanks, been doing it with the likes of Brendan Dorman's being on with you uh, Jason, Jason from, from MMA on Point. Point excellent stuff um, and a lot of people are interacting as well so if you're found obviously Fight Talk through Rob's live stream going who's the fucking loudmouth fella <laughs> <laughs> been here from the start lads yeah. it was just the way but um, 
Thanks a million for everyone today. Brendan Dom, an absolute pleasure. Ian yeah. Gary, an absolute pleasure. And Will Furry, absolute pleasure. And best of luck again, Will, on Saturday night. Um, shout out to Fight Star Ireland, the fighter's choice, everything you need under one roof. MMAMix.com. They're obviously good because they're with, obviously, Fight Talk. And to feel supreme.co.uk, 10% off with the code Fight Talk. Not a beat, Miss Rob. It's like I haven't been away. I have been. I'm back. The king is back. Ganu! Piece of shit. <laughs> it's been 114. Peace.